You know that melody doesn't come out loud. I don't hear that. Oh, I don't play this better, actually. I want to smoke a little more. What are you singing? You're oh, I'm singing. I'm just, I'm just bebopping, you know? Bebopping. Is most of the... Uh, Vowel. Vocals you do is, is just vowels and... Vowels, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes you're saying things, you know... Telling secrets. Sound good. Telling secrets? The same way you've always wanted to say the thousand <laughs> <laughs> The fine tuning I think has to do. Twelve isn't terrible. Huh? Twelve isn't terrible. Uh. Sound like a bebop band in New York. Let me just see where's a five here. One, four, five, seven. That's a hard lick to do to punch up. Okay, my friends. I'll try one more time. Okay, I can't explain to you what the beginning means. That's quite interesting. Is uh, no, you don't need that. I can't do it like here. I, what I, I'm really saying is something. I'm saying there's a saying in Austria. We say, "Of the wand, of the wand sits any fliege." Ich tap gleich hin mit der Hand. This is Fliege Musikanskis Kriege. What that means in English, there's a, a fly sitting on the wall. I tap with my hands to this fly, at, or at the fly. This fly, I gotta catch. And we do on the streets, instead of saying, Auf der Wand sitzt eine Fliege, ich tap gleich hier mit der Hand, ich, uh, diese Fliege muss ich kriege. We say, Auf der Wand. Use all the vowels and keep one vowel. After vowels, has the flag, and the hammer, the hand, and the cross the flag, and the cross the crown. You see, if the wind sees the fling, he will give him the hint, he will give the fling, he will give the scream. Play this for him on the tape. And we had to teach singers to sing this. <laughs> yeah, that takes a little while. Anyhow, that's what the beginning phrase really represents there. Time to do this. See. Hold up. Yeah. You think? Off the one, the flag. You think? Off the one, the flag. the flag. the hand. All across the flag. Must have got the if the wind sees the fling, it will hit the hand. It will the fling. Music gets the scream. Let me do it again. Gotta do it again. I'm sorry. Yeah, 
that's about it. That's hard, man. Jesus Christ. Is, did this come out this vocoder good enough? I think in the first chorus there was no vocoder, was it? Sure. Yeah? All right. So one of these two, you just, maybe you want to edit it or whatever. I don't know how you all feel about it. I, I, if I if do another one, maybe it's all right. It's, no, it feels, it feels good. good. <laughs> I'll do it one, one more time and jam it up, you know? I get loose with it. I've never done it before, man. It's the first, first time. It's gonna be cool. Okay. Let me just see if everything is working and then we're going for it. That's a good uh, dress rehearsal, right? I'll tell you something, man. That's a, a little pressure, you know? Do it on, on, on the film right for the first go. But there's something in it. It's going to be all right. That now I'm going to perform it really okay. After bar, after bar, sister flam. One second. When you did it, yeah, da, yeah, 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 da, did it, da. Other tune like nobody. I don't know where this is. Yeah, fourteen. How do you do that? How can I find doing this? Just excuse me. Give me a minute on this one. No, it's the lower note, that's the problem. Yeah, but I need the fourth though. Uh, uh. Yeah. That's what I need. I need those two notes, but they're not in tune, though. No. Again. You have to adjust in this little box right here, this blue box. This, this, this fellow right here, is there anything you need to do with that? Like a, flip, flip a switch or something? I'd like to yeah. a couple of details. Yeah, I gotta uh, do a lot of switching right here, as a matter of fact. In the course of a tune? Or yeah. Beforehand? During the tune also. Could I get you just just for the sake of cutting purposes, just to flip flick a switch on there? Beautiful. All right. Ready? Is 
off. Can you turn this up a little bit, man? The 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 the, the prophet. Now we're talking. All right. <laughs> James Brown. That's the baddest dude. Any you know him? Ah, shit, man. Jim. Give me a little piece of paper here, because yeah. there's a twilight coming in here with these stripes going over here from the microphone, and I, I cannot tell with boys four and five. Just put a little strip over here. Just a little tiny thing on four. Great, huh? So, so. I can't stand it. Yeah, those lines, see, that bothers me. They, 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 they lean over there in a funny way. Oh, 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 oh,
That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take one of the first two, you know? You know what's funny? This thing doesn't react correctly. When I go in 13 to play those chords, now it is, I don't know what I had on. Oh, that's what it was on, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get those pedals off and on, you know? It's, it's gonna be a, a matter of practice. But I think the first two, I would like, how can I hear, can I hear a little bit of that? Is there any way? 
Yeah, let's play it back for you. Yeah, that would be nice. Sure. You know, just have a little idea what the thing sounds like. Tape end. Five, four, three, two, one. After a while, sister flag with the boy hand at the heart, I'll the grisha fly, my she goes to car. After a while, after a while, sister flag with the boy hand at the heart. I just start this directly with the, the whole thing, okay? Starts like that. I just did. I'm ready to head on, I think. I hope so. Why is this trick changing, man? I changed the program and this changed. Don't think it up to me when you change patches. Sending a patch change over to the chrome. God damn it. We gotta straighten this out. Because I cannot move so fast. I, I gotta do so many things. Okay. I'm gonna be alright. Okay. <laughs> I know, but it's so hard to get in and out, you know, of one, you know, momentarily because it's fresh and I knew. I'm gonna try as hard as I can, no bullshit.
Excuse me. One more shot. Do 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 Make it shorter. How long is this about? I can make this a little shorter anyhow. Just get right down with it, you know? Look at the clock, Ivan, okay? One, two, one, two, three, four, 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 two, three, We gotta get this in song form, you know? Because it's too hard to concentrate and count on those bars there. It's hard. Take as long as you need. <laughs>
to cut this, right?
Are we already doing it? Yeah. See, we can take, we can take the good people.
think I'd, how, how long was this? I do one more. I do one more chorus. Yeah. Ready to go? Yeah, this was something. He wrote a lot of good pieces, you know. Most people actually don't know that Duke Ellington, maybe they do now, but he's always been called a, a jazz writer. The man was really awesome in, in all kinds of different fields in music. And this is one piece I always liked. As a matter of fact, once I played it for him. And uh, he used to play beautiful, him and, and, and Ray Nance. Ray Nance was a great trumpet player and violin player, and they played it together. He wrote a lot of good pieces, you know. Most people actually don't know that Duke Ellington, maybe they do now, 
But he's always been called a, a jazz writer. The man was really awesome in, in all kinds of different fields in music. And this is one piece I always liked. As a matter of fact, once I played it for him. And uh, he used to play beautiful, him and, and, and Ray Nance. Ray Nance was a great trumpet player and violin player, and they played it together. And, well, I liked this song. When did you, uh, when did you play that for him? Where, where? Well, I think it was, um, let me see, 1964. Where? And they had a recording session, the band, the Duke Ellington band in San Francisco, and uh, I sat down and played it. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go outside, yeah. do a little walking, mm -hmm. a little talking. From where? From here? You know, we were talking about um, the jazz musicians of years ago, and you mentioned that uh, so many of the greats uh, have died out. And we were talking about that uh, that spirit, that beat, that feel that they gave to the music. Uh, I wonder. Uh, I got the battery now. Just came on. Yeah. Okay, we're rolling. Okay. As I said, we were talking earlier about. Uh, the greats, the people who uh, really were the masters of jazz, um, some of whom are, are dead now. Um, and whether their, uh, not only their spirit, but their kind of music is going to live on. Um, someone like uh, Duke Ellington, uh, we're still alive, and maybe uh, a young musician, the young Duke Ellington, or a young Duke Ellington, were around today. Uh, what kind of music do you think he'd be playing? What kind of music do you think? Duke would have grown into or wanted to go into if he were immortal? I think his music wouldn't have all changed all that much. But let's say today, the development of electronic instruments, that would have been ideal for a guy like Duke Allen. Because his concept was he wrote for everyone in his band. For him, sound was the music. In other words, when he was writing, he, he listened to Johnny Hodges, for instance. He listened to Harry Carney. Harry Carney was the father of the saxophone section. Uh, he wrote for these people. But he had this all in his head. So today, with the development of electronic instruments, Duke would have been one of the masters because he had, he would have taken this, he would have created the sounds he wanted to hear and put them in this instrument and just would have played this music. I'm convinced of that. As a matter of fact, I remember that Duke used to carry around an electric Fender Rose. Didn't have a case. We went one time in, in, in one of the airports, you know, and there comes out of the chute, comes out this funky little, little Fender Rose piano, all banged up because there's no case. And it said on oh, Duke Ellington, you know, it was very funny. But we get back, I think Duke would have been one of the, the musicians who would have been really a master with this instrument because he was a man who was creating his music through sound. First is the sound, through the sound comes the song. What is, what do you feel your connection today is with the music of, of Duke Ellington and Count Basie and Louis Armstrong and the great bebop keyboard players. Where does that where does that live today in your music? Uh, it's difficult, you know, to actually define when you grow up what it is. But it was such a part of my life and so many musicians' lives at, at my age and in this era. It's very difficult, really, to define. Uh, 
I couldn't really, I, I couldn't really say this. This is, this is pretty difficult answer here. You, you're, you're really um, rather unique for a musician in that you really remain very true, no matter what stage of your music you were in. You remain very true to what kind of music you want to be play, playing. You grew and changed. Um, and always remained uh, not so much pure, but but really true to the kind of music you wanted. And really along the way, uh, always achieved a certain degree of success and even commercial success. When you were playing with Cannonball Adderley, you know, you wrote a song that became a commercial hit. Uh, now, when you've left that kind of music behind, um, you're also extremely successful. Um, is it luck? Is it accident? Did you plan it that way? No, you just play your music, and it's it's a wonderful thing if it happens, you know. That uh, I think with everyone, if you if you create something which you like, the greatest thing can happen after that. After you already have been the critique, having given it the seal of improvement, let's say, if then it bec can become something, people, a lot of people can enjoy it. That's a wonderful thing. I, I, I can't wait until the next time, frankly speaking, because uh, I do believe that, that some of the pieces, they are valuable as a, as a music, as a piece of art. And there's nothing wrong with success if you have something going. You look at Picasso. The man was doing what he wanted to do. And even in his lifetime, which is very rare, he could make some living. He could make a good living of what he was uh, enjoying to do. So uh, I'm, I have never planned anything. I'm going like it's going, you know? I feel uh, just being a human being, man, I'm just doing what I feel to do. And when, it's, when, I'm, when I'm getting lucky, I think luck is the, the best answer for it, because you don't ever know. I think we had, I had better pieces than Mercy Mercy or, or Birdland and, and nobody ever heard of them. So it's, uh, for me, that's not the hit. You know what I'm saying? Birdland is a wonderful piece of music, really. But to me, it's not the hit. I have a lot of pieces I like better. But it's wonderful if, if a lot of people can pick up on that and enjoy it. Please, give me another one, you know? How important to your music and your life is um, how you live now, where you live? Uh, I mean, you're not the, the, the isolated, solitary artist. You live in a beautiful place with your family, with your sons. Uh, you know, you go to the Olympics, you go to the basketball games. Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an integrated life. It's a, it's a whole life, you know? How important is that to be here and, you know, to have I guess it is very important, you know. Uh, 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 however, you don't think every every day of how important it is the way you live. It's just something you create for yourself. You create an environment. I think I did this with my music. I created an environment for this music. Because before we started, Wayne Shorter and myself, I don't think nothing like what we had been doing for the last 15 years had been done before. The same goes for the, uh, for the, the, the older masters, you know? That uh, you just create your own environment, you create your own following, and you create your own lifestyle. And it's something you don't just think about every day, but it's just something which is, uh, when you're comfortable, it's all right, you know? Would you change anything about the work? <laughs> Isn't this great?
last album they made with Jocko. That's when I started. And Peter Rich? Yeah. Peter, oh, he's a wonderful guy. He's done the damn show with Peter. He came up with the afterwards. He's a wonderful guy. Real nice guy. I got some drums too. Oh, he's being great. What did uh, um, Joe and Wayne just decide they needed a new direction? Well, um, Joe's been wanting to do this stuff. I mean, this original dialect tape. Well, I was talking about this came in his band around. Uh, well, Jocko was, Jocko and Peter went off to do Jocko's big band. I think it was Jocko's 17 piece big band. Oh, he's quite frequent. Washington? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he plays a lot of clubs now in New York. A lot of clubs really went into New York. They turned the stage on him for Playboy Fest. Why? They did what? They turned the stage on him during the set. Sorry, Jack, we can have more of this. Next act, please. What was he doing at the uh, radio? Just, I don't know, I wasn't there the second day for it, but uh, he was just, just fucking up bad. Picking over my amps and stuff and just being really strange on stage. Uh, at the time he got hurt in the Italy, he was second story balcony. He was out there and got to go in. Yeah, I'm there, I'm out of here. Yeah, okay, got me like cried wolf so many times to go out there. He, in the balcony, you know, help people running, running out there. Ah, oh, here's a kid. So he actually cried a little once too many times. He's like, hell, let's make a penny here. Yeah, sure, Jocko, sure. He fell, <laughs> broke his pelvis and his shoulder and three fingers and, you know, middle of the tour in Italy. And, you know, they're not. Synthro Society in LA. It's funny because in their industry, people are looking at different companies around here and artists and so forth. It's, just, it's big and little small business. Everybody knows everybody. You ever got the lake south, man? No, I don't. Man, you missed the sun for me. You can do that, huh? Uh huh. Best of the last three that that band did. How many do they have out with the new personnel? Three. There's Procession, Domino Theory, and Sportline. And they cover Marvin Gaye's tune. Yeah, Tony is the oldest son of a drummer. He was 19 and his youngest is 16. So, famous one takes guitar, film. 
what the author says. Burn the fame up is it's Joe Lesson's turn. Joe's got a wooden a wooden soprano sax called the Terra Book. It's a Hungarian disc instrument. You know, like one of them in this country that plays the one. There's a wooden soprano sax on it. It's wow, the tone of it. Great. I think he wanted his privacy, so I yeah. went to the mic. And, uh, yeah, it's Let's try one and see what's happening. Just go for it.